All right, hello everyone. It's time for a little bit of drawing in a little sketchbook I have here. A little bit of splattered red ink on the outside from who knows where. A couple of various things in here. An upside down doodle from ages past. And today we'll continue drawing. I'm not gonna, s oh, oh, these are notes about, uh, these are Minecraft coordinates. Huh. Anyways, I'm not going to speed this video up. I'm not going to speed this video up. Just going to play things the normal speed. And uh, you all can hang out and draw along with me if you want. This looks like a nice place to draw. Right here. Got some Peter pens. Let's see what we can do. This is the fine, fine nib. Let's see if it's working. I'm just gonna start scribbling. Oh yeah, look, look at it go. This line it's drawing doesn't seem that fine. Let me zoom in a tiny bit. I think the paper is very absorbent, judging by some of these previous drawings, like here. Stuff goes through pretty well. So, oh, and I've smudged it. Three lines drawn, and I've smudged it. Just, just draw. Hope you're all doing okay today. I'm doing pretty good. Just, I'm just existing. That's enough. It's good enough. Today I went to something called, um, Porch, oh, this is smudge-tastic, Porch Fest. My friend's neighborhood does this thing once a year called Porch Fest, where different people um, ha host different like musicians on their porches and then you can walk around in the neighborhood and listen to the people play from the porches so you can like stand in the front yard or on the street and like food trucks come and set up and it's just like a so it's, it's really cool time I did that then I came home I didn't stay for the whole thing but it was fun to just walk around the weather was amazing and like I don't I used to be I don't know why for a long time I didn't wear shorts very much I don't think I'm like a I don't think I'm insecure about my legs or anything if if I ever was insecure about my legs it's because they're really pale but that's just because I never wear shorts it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy right they stayed pale because anyways uh, no I, I wear shorts sometimes now except to bed I cannot wear shorts to bed I have to wear pants to bed Sometimes I even wear straight-up jeans to bed, but I've get, been getting better at wearing things that are slightly more socially acceptable to bed, like sweatpants, but I still wear, like, my chinos to bed. I just sleep. It's just cozy. If I if I don't wear pants to bed, I don't know, it's like I feel overstimulated from the all the bed sheets touching my leg hairs or something. But if I have pants on in bed, it's like I feel sn like a snug. I feel snug. Maybe that's the word. Yeah. I'll draw a circle right here. Uh huh. And then after I went to that porch fest thing, I came home and I mowed the lawn. I might have, some of you might remember that previously I talked about my lawnmower, my new lawnmower, and how I, when I bought it from Lowe's or I think it was Home Depot or I think it was, I think it was Lowe's, and the guy really tried to talk me out of it saying it was a terrible lawnmower, that it wasn't going to work very well, that it was going to break after the second use, at least the one. I think he was really trying to sell me on buying the extended warranty. Uh, but I didn't buy it, mostly because he was bugging me so much about it. And, I mean, the lawnmower's still working pretty good. Last time I used it, it started kind of sputtering and choking a little bit, and I was like, oh no, here it goes. And I was like getting worried as the grass grew longer and longer, and I knew that surely I was going to have to mow the lawn again and inevitably I'd have to figure out, you know, maybe the lawnmower wouldn't even work. It did take a, a couple of extra pulls to get it started today, but it ran all right. I, I pulled, I found a socket wrench I had that five eighths inch socket that I used to remove the single spark plug in the lawnmower. And I pulled it out and it well, it looked like a spark plug. I was like, well, I don't really know what to do with it now. Maybe if I had like a, I think you have to use like a steel 
wire brush and you can like kind of clean it up a little bit but it didn't look that gunky I kind of r brushed it off my finger and i know you can also like gap it right adjust the gap of the spark plug that's like maybe it's a spark plug issue but also maybe it's a carburetor issue i'm not really sure what a carburetor does i think maybe it has something to do with um, controlling how much gas goes into the engine or something like that but the guy who sold me it at Lowe's said these ones have plastic carburetors don't buy it or something like that or at least if you do buy it spend extra to get the extended warranty anyways it worked well today after it's once it finally started it worked fine that's what I want to say I really like mowing now more days I think the problem with mowing when I was a little kid is that I just had to mow whenever my parents told me to. And my parents were like, every Saturday, you mow. Or like once a week, it was just like a thing. Every d The problem was, it was whether or not the lawn needed it. Now I can just keep on going by my lawn and be like, huh, yeah, it looks like the grass is pretty long. And then it, if the grass is long, it's satisfying to mow because you can make a difference. You can see where you've been. The most frustrating and I just felt like I was wasting my time sometimes mowing when I couldn't even see where I had been or not. But you know, my parents didn't really seem to care. Sometimes I could talk them out, like, can I just do the backyard, just the front yard, or... But most of the time they were like, just mow. So I did. I'm liking this drawing so far. Maybe some more scribble, scribble it in a little darker right here. Maybe this part a little darker. Got plenty of ink in here. I like this kind of graph paper with the dots. Not that I ever really pay attention to the dots, but it's kind of like a nice little background besides being totally blank. You know, I think do it like start like a little repetitive pattern shape here. Whenever I do this, it starts reminding me of teeth, even though I'm not really intending to draw teeth. Maybe I'm in, my mind just sees teeth everywhere, and then I, once I, once my mind says, oh, what you're drawing looks like teeth, then what I, I start drawing things that look even more like teeth. If I do enough of them on top of each other, it won't be too toothy. Like, nobody has triple teeth, quadruple rows of teeth, right? So maybe sharks. There we go. Bring this one down around. Little little base to the drawing here. Mm-hmm. Also, yeah, a little update. The some of I posted the video for the Bach to the drawing board video where I it was like a live event I did, like the first live event I've ever done. That was open to the public, and it was really good. It went well. The worst part of it by far was waiting, like the, like the few days leading up to it. I was just like nervous for no reason. I think it was just some kind of like the, the fear of the unknown, right? Because it wasn't really something I've done before. And I don't know, but then the actual event, they went fine. I think they weren't the, like my favorite drawings I've ever done, but they were all right. One of them, I felt like <laughs> the, the, the suite, the second suite, that kind of ended before I was ready. And I was like, wow, I could have, could have drawn a little bit more on that one. I kind of want to, but then you just kind of got to, you just got to let it go. Cause I mean, that's the kind of the nature and the purpose of that kind of drawing and art. When it's done, it's done, and if you felt unfinished, maybe that was kind of part of the music. It's, it's all right. All right. I think this is, with enough teeth added here, it's looking a little bit more like scales or pomegranate seeds. I want to do more drawings with uh, ballpoint pens as well. I think I'm going to do more of those in my legal pad. A lot of people are telling me, you know, those fade over time. Like, actually, some people tell me they fade really quick, ballpoint pen drawings. And, I mean, I don't really mind. 
especially, I mean, I've taken a picture of it. That, the picture doesn't fade. But no, it, nothing lasts forever anyways, so even this drawing, I guess this ink doesn't fade like ballpoint pen ink does, but it's, I mean, maybe it doesn't fade at all. Is this stuff permanent? Does it last forever? There's nothing on the bottle except this tiny little label. And there are some words right here that are so tiny, they're illegible. Like, I think even with a microscope, you couldn't read them because they're just printed so small, they don't even form real words or letters. Another circle, maybe some dots. I think I'm going to do another circle. Dark. Another circle here. Split it off like branches. Branches and like veins in a body look very similar. Like I took this picture of a tree outside my house once in the night and it was like the sky behind it was a little bit lighter and red. And then I looked at the picture later. And if I looked at it upside down, it looked like those pictures you see of like the, all the veins in like a lung or something. It, there's gotta be some, it's like the same kind of, I don't know, there's not like a thought process for veins and branches growing, but some kind of process for how those appear. And they must be pretty similar because they get very similar results. The way they branch off cover space, you know what I'm saying? How, do, how does a branch know when to split? Maybe it doesn't know when to split, it's just, maybe it's always trying to split and it just splits when it meets certain requirements. Like, yeah, sometimes a branch doesn't split, sometimes it's just growing and then another branch later on comes and grows off the side of it in some random spot. Yeah, because you see like a tree trunk it can grow and then suddenly a branch will be just suddenly growing off the side of the tree trunk. It's not really splitting, but sometimes it does seem like branches split. I love those videos of uh, like plants growing quickly, especially the vines growing up something and then they reach the top of the thing they're growing and they wave around. It looks like they're really alive. They're like frantically waving around, trying to find something to grab onto. There's nothing there. Nothing, nothing there. Might turn this over a little bit. Work at it from this angle. Sprout some things off like this. Give me something to work with here. Pretty good. This reminds me of like a very weird, weird tree. This is the bottom down here. This is the top. This is like the fruit that's growing on the tree. I don't know what all this stuff is still. Now they remind me of barnacles. All those things down there. I'm going to add some more here. Color this in darkly. Contrast. I might... After I finish this page right here, I might come in with some colored pencils and try adding some color. Then also, one thing that discourages me from adding color, which I know is a terrible reason, but it still does, is that sometimes when I try publishing my art later in my little self-published books, I'm trying to make another one of those soon, by the way, but it's so much cheaper to publish black and white books, color books, 
ramp up the cost of printing so much. And if it's a color drawing, it doesn't get very accurately represented in a black and white drawing, you know? I mean, black and white print. So then sometimes when I'm putting those books together, I come across all my black and all, a couple of the colored ones I've made. I'm like, wow, this kind of, kind of sucks that I can't really include that in this. At least if I do include it, it won't be very accurately represented. But maybe, maybe one day I have enough artwork with different colors in it that I it will just, I'll be able to justify making a completely colorful publishment, publishment, that's definitely not a word, publish, P book, a book of colors, all the colors of the wind. I'm drawing pretty fast right now. I could be drawing a lot. I could be drawing faster. I could be drawing a lot slower. This is kind of like just above, like if if one is the slowest I can I I draw and ten is the fastest. I'm maybe at like a six, maybe a seven. I don't know. Like I would draw it at one when I used to do those mandalas that were so intricate and careful and I was trying to replicate perfect little patterns super perfectly and I didn't want to mess anything up. I was I was really into that for a long time, but I don't know, I guess I, I got it out of my system. My brain, that doesn't, doing those don't tickle my brain anymore like they used to, so. I mean, I, like, I still like looking back at my old ones. I just have no, no desire to draw them anymore. That's okay. Don't like, don't force yourself to draw things that you don't feel like drawing. Just like sit down and just see what comes out of the pen. That's my, that's my approach anyways. Might work differently for other people. And you might be more successful if you, I'm not saying it's the path to success either. So if you, if you do it my way, you might end up drawing the same dumb thing over and over again for a long time. Because I sometimes I look back at all my drawings and I'm like, well, a lot of these are kind of the same. Aimless, pointless things. But, one big upside, I had fun drawing. Almost all of them. I think I'm pretty good at stopping drawing or changing the drawing if I don't like it. Like if I was right here and I didn't like this, I could either walk away or I could, you know, like start adding something different. Like, oh, I think I'm going to start doing like really geometric square stuff here. Maybe that'll maybe that'll mix it up and make it a little more fun. I don't have to stick to what I was doing. I'm not committed to anything here. I am in control. I'm the only one to blame for how this turns out. Good blame or bad blame. pen is being a little bit weird. I think maybe this, this paper is almost like almost too absorbent. <laughs> I wonder what it looks like from the other side. Oh, not as much as bleeding through as I thought or expected. Also, I'm glad I haven't smudged it much more. It was a bad start. I smudged it like twice right at the beginning. Could be worse. Okay, I think we're almost ready to come in with the colored pencils. I do want to try that, see what happens. Turning it back around. Come in right here, a little bit of this. But maybe if I wanted to use the colored pencils in the future, I should, I don't know, it's a lot of it is just like dark. I didn't leave a lot of empty space to color in. Maybe, maybe that's okay. Also, I don't know if I need to like, let it dry a little bit while coloring on top of this right away. Mess with the ink at all? I don't think so. I think it'll be okay. It's 
pretty good. All right, let me. Got the Prisma colors here. Ooh, dusty. Zoom out a little bit. <laughs> I half expected there to not be Prismacolor pencils in here. You know how that is sometimes with like tins like these, or you like find some other use for them, and you know maybe my colored pencils could be in some other random container. That does happen. Right here's my pencil sharpener if I need it, but sometimes. Pencil sharpener like this breaks the lead more than sharpens it, and I might just prefer to use a, a, what's it called, like a knife of some sort, but I don't know if I have one right here in front of me, and I don't really want to, I don't want to get up, to put it bluntly. Oh, I, wait a second. I found just this random blade that could work in a pinch. I might, I'm going to try, I'm emptying it into the trash can right now. I'm going to try to use this pencil sharpener if I need it. And if it, it seems like it's breaking the pencil lead, then I'll try using the blade without hurting myself, hopefully. All right, what color do I want? Obviously, I like this green. You can tell because it's so short. This yellow is also, you can tell which colors I prefer because they're the shortest ones. I think these ones were, sh these really sharp pointy ones were sharpened maybe with this thing. They look very, they're extremely pointy. Mm. Wait, I'm going to take a picture of this first before I color it, just for documentation purposes. Where's my phone? Got a, so for some reason, drawing on paper makes it like curl up at the edges. So I'm, I'm imposing my will upon it to make it lie flat. I command thee. Hold on. Almost done. Very nice. Picture taken. Now, even if I, after coloring it, it turns into something I don't really like, I'll at least have that to look back on for a good time. All right, I'm going to try to use some of these pencils that I haven't used before. Some of the, some of the virgin pencils, like this one, Crim Crimson Lake. Looks like almost completely unused. I'm gonna pick out three pencils and then use those. Crimson Lake, I'm gonna test them out right here. That is a nice color. And then, this one's light peach. I don't know about this one. Maybe, this is an option. I didn't think it was, but it is. It actually goes pretty well with that. I don't know how, I hope it shows up all right on the video. And then, dark purple. These are very, all kind of in the same neck of the woods. I think I kind of want something that's like, if you look at one of those color wheels, you ever use one of those color theme generators? All three of these would be kind of near on the same side of the color wheel. I want I kind of want something that's on the other side of the color wheel. So maybe I'm looking for like a, like a something. These are like cool. I'm trying to imagine the color wheel. <laughs> maybe I need like a green. Yeah, these are reds, purples. Is there an unused green anywhere? This one. Dark green. Uh, no, I don't like that color. Let 
about this ultramarine. That is a powerful blue. Oh, wait, I'm going to put it this one next to this one. This looks very patriotic right now, almost too patriotic. Yeah, it's a bad combination. I don't like the red. The red and blue, it's too obvious. I like the red though. I'll put the blue back. What about this one? Dark Umber. Huh. What about this? Dark Umber. Crimson Lake and Light Peach. That's an option. This is an option. Oh, sure, the crimson umber is still a little. I don't know if I want that for my third still. But this one, ginger root. Interesting. It's a very another very subtle one along with the light peach. If I do this one, then the crimson lake turns into the bright one, and these two are very similar. I'm almost too similar though. But the how close they are will make it very subtle. Could be interesting. I might just go with that. But now I'm now I'm feeling weird about the red one, this crimson lake. Dark brown. I think I, there's going to be something that can go with the Crimson Lake and the Light Peach to make me feel good about it. That color exists. Nope. It's out there somewhere. I mean, in here somewhere. Am I overthinking it? I feel like I might be overthinking it. But I'm allowed to do that. I can do that if I want to. Silver. I don't think this is it. It's like a weird metallic thing. Dark brown, already looked at that. Maybe I maybe I've used all the good colors. Magenta. Wait, is this how different is this? Magenta is a crazy color. Ooh. Second. These look almost identical. Slightly different. Hmm. I kind of want to use the magenta instead of. Wait, the magenta has been used. Look, it's shorter. Actually, yeah, the magenta has been used before. It's an imposter. Putty beige. Okay. Okay, I like these two together. We put the light peach and putty beige next to each other. And then Then the Crimson Lake. Okay, I think I could go with this. I like this right here. I know you probably can't see it very well. Let me zoom in for you. Is that visible? I think that's the color theme I want. Make a better swatch right here. The light peach is very light. All right. I'm putting the other pencils away now, if I can. Hmm. 
Hmm. My ice maker just made a noise and it startled me. I'm gonna start with some very light, like lake, lake, crimson lake. I mean, maybe it's light. I don't know. This ring obviously has to be red. And then this ring also, maybe mostly red, maybe red around the outside. And then I'll bring in another color. Maybe like some redness here. I think these colors can blend because they're like wax pencils, right? I don't know, I'm not very, obviously, don't use colors very much, but we'll see what happens. Also, the question is, am I committing to coloring the whole thing or can I leave some uh, areas white? White is a powerful color too. Is that one of, is white one of my colors is what I'm asking. I think it is. I think it's uh, almost necessary because there's, it's like, I've already have gradations of this color. That means white is mixed in. Making the bottoms of these things red with a little gradient going up and I'll add something else maybe. Almost like they're inflamed. Inflamed with Crimson Lake. Yeah, this is working pretty good with the ink. Like the ink's not smudging or anything, I don't think. All right, let me try some of this light peach there there pretty much just coloring my own drawing here it's, it's okay Go with some peach around the edge of this. Okay, it is smudging the ink around a little bit, actually. I see some darkness, blackness. Some here. It's not the end of the world. I'll embrace it. Go with it. Starting to look a little bit uh, like fleshy or something. Maybe I can put down like a light peach layer here and come back with a little bit of the red to make some like, I don't know. You know how like sometimes parts of the body have like, they're like flushed a little bit red. Like, you know, like here around my fingers and stuff, knuckles are a little more, more red. I wonder if the, the ink would smudge less if I'd let it dry longer, but it seems pretty much dry, so I don't know. I haven't used the the putty, the beige putty, putty beige yet. Oh, I was barely touching the paper. So much red goes down. Can't control it. It's too powerful. Oh, this is... I don't know about this. Just keep going, Peter. You're thinking too much. Just draw. It's the putty... What is it called? Putty beige. That means it's a shade of paid beige. It's like putty.
I guess so. I think I will leave a lot of it white probably. A little more red here. A little kind of a red highlight there. Give it like a sense of roundness. We like just a tiny stroke here. And here. I'm going to draw this. This thing is putty beige. Yeah, the ink is, ink is smearing. It's okay. The whole thing's just getting a little darker. It can only smear so much. It's kind of a interesting effect, the smearing, actually. The, the, the wax on top of the, the lines kind of softens the lines sometimes a little bit. The wax on top of the black. Look at that. You can kind of see a little bit on top of the blackness. Kind of like a hint of lines back there. It'd be interesting to make a color in a lot of have like a big dark area and then draw with one like a pencil like this on the back of it. I like this. This is barely, almost like not even a color. This gray, this beige, but it's enough of a color that it makes. I need to. Yeah, I'm gonna leave some stuff white. That way, the stuff that is white that I haven't colored like. Be that much more interesting, I guess. Sorry, I think you can't see what I just did. I was drawing up there off camera. Okay, it's looking pretty cool. Yeah, a little more, a couple, a little more hints of Crimson Lake. Some of these spots, just a touch. Might have been too much. This, a few of these can be red to make it look like there's some kind of something, some sort of thread going through the whole drawing, like the thesis in a paper, holding it all together. I really have to fight putting yellow in here. But it'll be okay without yellow. Not every drawing needs yellow. I just want to put it in every drawing. I think it would make a lot of drawings. I don't know. I was about to say better, but I don't, know. I don't think I want to use that word. I think I'm about done with it, actually. I don't know if it's getting better anymore. Oh no, I just used the word better again. It's okay, I can use that. I can say that. Hmm. Alright, thanks for watching everyone. This fun little live drawing. With our little color swatches over here. Pen colored pencils. Peter Pen. I think there's still some of these available on... Uh, on the website so click the link in the description if you want one appreciate all the support there let me know what kind of drawing i should do next for one of these little real-time drawings i think they're fun to do sometimes sometimes i might run out of things to say but then i'll just sit here quietly drawing without saying anything so that's the worst case scenario all right yeah nice i'll take a picture of it now too but i guess i can stop recording all right bye